Thank you very much, Marie Claire, for your very interesting paper. So we have some, we have um, um, 15 minutes for discussion, maybe debate, questions, remarks. Yes. If you make the traditional, or a traditional um, distinction between contemplation and mysticism, Med mystical experience, would you call more contemplative? Ah, that is very difficult. I was going to say no. <laughs> I was going to say no. I think he contemplates from time to time, perhaps at night, but I would not say no. No, I would not say that. No. I'm ready to hear arguments to the contrary. <laughs> Yes. Thanks very much for, for yes. this rich paper. And I think it's, it's an aspect that that hasn't been much investigated. Really. That's, True. That's yes. Thank you, Gabby. Um, what I found interesting was this definition from which you departed: knowledge of God by experience, especially mm. uh, in view of the look at, at Teresa von Ab at Teresa Avila. Um, she very often appeals to, it, to her personal experience yes. um, when trying to defend her um, mystical approach to prayer. Yes. Um, which, by the way, I think she didn't see as something uh, merely sort of personal or exclusivist, but which she wanted to teach others, and which she thought that would be something that, that it would, uh, would be worthwhile to, to spread to others, and that's why her first published work, for example, The, the Way of Perfection was, was written yes. for her sisters in, in order to teach them this way. And she had um, continually had to, to fend off um, objections that um, by, by, well, by censors who thought that yes. would uh, lead too much into a, into, into a reformist uh, stance to being too subjective and so forth. So I think the, the opposition between pastoral writing and Mystic mm -hmm. writing is something that perhaps um, yes. isn't isn't always uh, tenable, especially. When perhaps I should formulate it differently. But I, I've read Davila uh, it, in the text in, in Spanish. I remember from a long time ago, and I, I was struck by the feelings that flow, and that that's never the case with with Thomas More really. And he, there's always some sort of uh, lesson. It's not only reasoning; it's lesson. You should do that. I mean. I feel that uh, Avila is, uh, or Teresa is more yeah, sure. I mean, she, she sensitive. Lays much, much greater emphasis on on on, on feeling, on emotion. Uh, yeah, on the emotions, perhaps. Um, yeah, and another point is that um, Brian Cummings had a very interesting paper this morning in, in a in a John Donne panel where he argued on uh, about um, the early modern concept of experience as mm, a lack coming from Latin experientia, not so much as a psychological concept, but rather as putting something to the test, putting knowledge to the test, to the practical test, experiri as, as putting something to the test. So it's kind of, um, I think what both of them, perhaps, Teresa Wabila as well, and more, mm. in a way, um, perceive mysticism as it is a kind yes. of alternative form of knowledge. Yes. Uh, a knowledge that has been put to personal proof. And um, I think uh, the problem for Moore perhaps was that in, in his context, um, this kind of personal uh, proof for faith was something that, that was too deeply charged with, um, with ambiguity in, in the Reformation context. We, we, had, we have Tyndall's feeling faith in yes. the Tyndall controversy. Yes. So I think he, um, he perhaps he stressed much more the sort of traditional rational yes. uh, yeah. knowledge rather than this, this kind of experiential um, knowledge. I think he was wary of that, of uh, experience or in the context of devotion modern, now well, yes, of Protestant, uh, of the other attitude, then he, he was probably trying to remain on the rational side to be safe. Yes. 
It's interesting. But Augustine. <coughs> Augustine defines faith as the capacity to believe yes. in that which you cannot see or know. Exactly. And that. Uh, so that Thomas More follows. So he has follows his his faith is mm. grounded in what he can know. Mm. But if we put this to the test, I mean, the the final test is of course accepting to die for his faith. So. Um, that's the experiment. That's the experience. But still, right? Would you have called uh, Thomas more mystic, Anne, for example? Yeah, I, you you have been persuaded. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that sometimes our error is to assume that fervency is the same. Well, this is yes, fervency. That's that's well said. Mm -hmm. Fervency, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, can I ask you something? Uh, this mystical experience, I was wondering if there is a kind of suspension of, of time, you know, a sen um, yes. if it could be understood as um, mm -hmm. a moment yes. when there is no more time, no more... Yes. But that's what we find in the mystics, false. that's what we find in Teresa Vavila, that's mm -hmm. what we find in, in others. Uh, John on the cross, I cannot remember what time it was. I, I'm not too sure because I, I don't know him so well. Um, uh, yes, this idea of uh, suspended time. I've never seen that in more. Never. Maybe just he experienced things he did not write about. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> but I say, so, yeah, I don't know. Yes? Mm -hmm. In official line, um, more talks about special servants. Uh, yes. Well, to me, I understood it as he referring to the mystics that had experienced God, that had been given that gift of uh, seeing God, like uh, Catherine of Siena, or uh, having the stigmas, having some sort of physical certitude, like miracles. I think these were uh, the good, the servants that God had chosen to show them that he existed, right? So Thomas More had to believe that God existed without uh, having the, the physical uh, word proof, right? Mm. So it's a matter, a matter of faith and uh, nothing else, if I may say so. I, mean, I may be pragmatic, but uh, I haven't had these revelations to be able to talk to you about that. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would ask you if you had a mystical experience so you could explain. <laughs> Yes? Would, would Moore have, have known, uh, it's a silly question, but would, would Moore have, uh, as he, in his time, have known the English medieval mystics such as Juliana of Norwich or the author of The Cloud of Undying? Maybe were, the, they, were they known by, by Moore and his circle? I wonder. I wonder. I'm not too sure. I no. Uh, yeah, we've read uh, Cloud of Unknowing, it was well known, but I don't know if it's. I think there must have been, a, there may have been a breach between the, these darker ages, if we may say so. I know it's, yeah. it's politically incorrect today, but and um, he always mentions Gerson and that those mm -hmm. more nearer to him. But souls in purgatory that come back on earth and say things mm -hmm. seem to accredit that. Saint Bri uh, Sam Brigitte de Suède, in, mm -hmm. in English, I don't know, how do you say this? Yeah, it's the same, eh? yeah. right, uh, he mentions her, mm. if I'm not mistaken. So, he does believe that uh, souls in purgatory get themselves heard to us, because if he has not heard them, he has heard somebody who has, you know, it's like with ghosts. <laughs> Yeah, more questions, commentaries? Well, so, so I think we will close the session at uh, six and a half, precisely. Uh, that was the time. Thank you very okay. much for your yeah. papers. Thank you very much. Have, uh, learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you.